Watching Alabama's WVUA News at 6 with your award-winning news team, Lynn Brooks, Philip Coleman, weather with Richard Scott, and sports with Gary Harris. Tonight on WVUA News at 6. Thousands of new jobs are on their way to Alabama and hundreds right here in Tuscaloosa County. We'll show you where. And big changes may be on the way for Tuscaloosa schools. But first, good news if you're looking for a job. Hundreds of new jobs are on the way to Tuscaloosa County. And they're bringing with them a six-figure salary. Walter Energy announced today it's building a new coal mining project with a billion-dollar price tag. It's expected to create around 530 new jobs. Officials say the underground coal mine will be built near Brandon School Road and Highway 69 North in northern Tuscaloosa County. Walter Energy officials say they're also building facilities in Fayette County and Walker County and a coal terminal in Mobile. Salaries are expected to be around $120,000. And residents told us this is good news for the community. We talking about jobs for probably 50 years. I mean, this is a big area of coal. And uh, I see, uh, I see nothing but uh, good things happening to the community of this community of Flatwoods and, and uh, the Whitson Place. And officials say the Blue Creek Energy Mine will be operational in the year 2018. Major changes may soon be on the way to your child's classroom. Alabama State Superintendent Dr. Tommy Bice addressed business and education leaders this morning, all part of today's State of the Schools event. WVUA's Jennifer Edwards has more on the changes and what local education leaders are saying about them. Well, let me start with the funding. It is becoming a crisis of sorts. We might lose anywhere from 12 to 16 staff members. Funding is on a lot of Alabama education leaders' minds. According to Alabama State Superintendent Dr. Tommy Bice, Alabama legislature is currently discussing the public school budget. And even though the public school system is facing one of the worst financial crises, Bice says the result may be positive. If we can make any sort of positive out of this, this is causing us to rethink how we do education, which isn't always a bad thing. It's causing us to change some of our policies to allow school systems to be more creative and more innovative on in how they meet the needs of their students. Tuscaloosa City Schools Superintendent Dr. Paul McKendrick and Tuscaloosa County Schools Interim Superintendent Dan Butler are preparing for the worst. According to Butler, the county school systems could lose up to 25 teachers. We would miss about $15,000 to $16,000 of other current expense for each of those teachers, and there's, you lost about $2 million to our program. And that would be directly, direct loss to the instructional. McKendrick says the city school system could also lose teachers, but there is still hope. But some of the legislation that's there is supposedly done to reduce the, the divisors, and if that's the case, then the 12 to 16 people that we're talking about might, that, that might be lower. So anywhere from, um, I guess, 10 to 16. The Finance and Taxation Education Committee recently approved a $5.5 billion education budget for next school year. This proposal cuts K-12 through schools by about 1%. Reporting in Tuscaloosa, Jennifer Edwards, WVUA News. Parents and students in the Tuscaloosa City School System can expect some new changes. According to Dr. Paul McKendrick, a new ROTC program is coming to Bryant High School for the fall. Charges for summer school have been reduced. Changes to the bail schedule when students return in the fall. And the work continues to rebuild University Place and Alberta Elementary Schools destroyed in the April 27 tornado. And Dr. McKendrick says University Place Elementary is scheduled to reopen in August of 2013. Parents and students in the Tuscaloosa County School District can also expect some changes. According to Interim Superintendent Dan Butler, a new superintendent will be announced on June 15th. Holt Elementary School, damaged in the April 27th tornado, is set to reopen in October of this year. Also, the new Southern Elementary School is set to open in August 2013. 
followed by the new Brookwood High School in December of 2013. On your home team crime watch, an arrest in connection with an assault at the University of Alabama. As we have reported, this happened Monday at Burke West Residence Hall. Tuscaloosa County Metro Homicide Captain Lloyd Baker says 19-year-old Mackenzie Webster has been charged with assault. Kathy Andreen with University Relations says four female students were said to be fighting. One girl was cut with a pocket knife and taken to DCH Regional Medical Center with injuries said to be minor and non-life-threatening. Hyundai is revving up job opportunities. They're looking for more than 800 new employees. Hyundai says they're looking to add a third shift to build more Sonatas and Elantras. Company officials say it should raise the plant's output by about 20,000 vehicles this year. Hyundai says hiring and training will begin this summer. The plant will start the new shift in September. The added production is expected to create new jobs and parts at part supplies companies. New at 6, a University of Alabama professor has created breakthrough technology that can reduce noise in engines like jets. The material is placed directly onto the flame and acts like a sponge for noise. Dr. Ajay Arawal was recently granted a patent for the noise sponge. This patent is based on his work with jet engine combustion. The project is funded by the U.S. Navy. Experts say the deafening noise can be devastating to the engine and can even cause it to break down. But this new technology eliminates the noise at the source. There are certain types of noises that are very annoying and they can actually destroy the aircraft or have a very adverse effect on aircraft engines. Those can also go away. And experts also say this noise sponge can be useful in other industries using combustion. Now, still to come here on WVUA News at 6, five men arrested in connection with a planned terrorist attack. We'll have the details straight ahead. And coming up in home team weather, it is hot this afternoon, upper 80s for around 90 area wide. What about any cooler temperatures in the forecast? And how about some rain chances? Your forecast is coming up. And Crimson Tide football coach Nick Saban teed it up for a good cause today over in Georgia. Gary Harris will have the story coming up in Alabama's home team sports. In Cleveland, Ohio, five men are behind bars accused of conspiring to blow up a bridge. Investigators say the public was never in danger. An undercover FBI agent was involved and the explosives were inert. The suspects range in age from 20 to 35. Authorities say three of the self are self suspects are self-proclaimed anarchists. The FBI says the target of the plot was a bridge over the Cuyahoga Valley National Park that's in the Brecksville area, about 15 miles south of downtown Cleveland. These five self-proclaimed anarchists conspired to develop multiple terror plots designed to negatively impact the greater Cleveland metropolitan area. Law enforcement took swift, collaborative action based on this intelligence and undertook a myriad of coordinated and investigative techniques in order to eliminate the risk of violence and protect the public. Officials say the suspects are not tied to international terrorism. Well, things have really started to heat up here in West Alabama, literally. 
as we look live over Bryant-Denny Stadium from our tower camera. Chief Meteorologist Richard Scott has your home team forecast when we come back. Alabama's home team weather. Welcome back and a good Tuesday afternoon to you. How about this? A nice beach day down towards the south. This is our Destin Beach camera looking southeast over the Gulf of Mexico and not many people down there today on a weekday, but the waves are larger today and that's due to the system that's coming our way over the Gulf. We're talking a tropical disturbance moving our way. Nothing organized, but at least we're noticing that increase in wave action down along the coast and here locally. It is a hot day. You're looking north across the campus, University of Alabama, and mostly blue skies in place, but some cloud cover has arrived this afternoon, this evening, and that's filtering out some of that sunlight. 88, officially in Tuscaloosa now. Viewpoint temperature 61, a lot of moisture in the atmosphere at the surface, and that's making it feel kind of muggy out there. If you've been outdoors, you certainly notice that, and that's due to that south-southwest wind at 8 miles per hour, bringing in that tropical moisture straight off the Gulf. No rain to deal with yet, and we're going to stay dry at least through tomorrow morning, but you'll notice some changes happening south of some showers showing up right along the immediate Gulf Coast. There's a disturbance developing down in the Gulf, and again, not becoming anything organized, but it will bring at least some rain chance our way as we go to Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Right now it is hot and dry tonight. We stay dry this evening. We've got plans out in about 72 by uh, 10 o'clock tonight. Midnight temperature around 67, partly cloudy conditions to mostly clear. No chance of rain through tonight, but again, it will be mild and muggy and humid out there. If you've got those plans outdoors this evening, that's due to this ridge of high pressure keeping us hot and settled across the deep south. The core of the ridge close to Savannah, Georgia right now, and that ridge is going to shift off towards the east and allow that disturbance to move our way in the Gulf. And again, nothing organized down in the Gulf of Mexico, but some shower activity will uh, press our way over the next few days and at least bring some rain to parts of Alabama, which we certainly need that. Futurecast brings a rain and storms here starting tomorrow, and I think Futurecast overdoing a little bit on our rain totals across our counties by tomorrow evening around 7 o'clock. Some heavy storms according to that uh, right across the area. It looks like it's probably more scattered activities to isolated storms again Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, but at least we'll see some rain across parts of the state through the day on Friday. Saturday, Sunday, that ridge builds back in the area and it gets hot again. Temperatures back in the 90s over the weekend. 63 tonight, partly cloudy, mild and muggy. Calm wind tonight and 86 tomorrow 
I think temperatures come down just a few degrees due to the extra cloud cover and some scattered showers and storms in the area. South wind at around 5 to 10 miles per hour. Seven-day forecast brings on that chance to rain through Friday. At this point, about 30%, so we're not talking a total washout or an all-day type of rain through Friday, but we go dry again for the weekend, and it gets hot again. Temperatures close to 90 on Saturday and Sunday. 90s are likely on Monday and Tuesday. Overnight lows continue in the 60s. Here's our Tuscaloosa Toyota Fishing Game forecast, home of the lifetime warranty. Best activity tomorrow happens close to 1130 in the morning. Peak action well into the good range. Again, that's for Wednesday. Tomorrow, next best activity happens around 6 o'clock in the evening. Again, good range is expected. By the way, had a group come today from Winfield High School, and this is the media class. This is a, a senior class over in Winfield High School come down today, and this is over Southern Marion County, and they came for a tour of our television station, and some of these are aspiring journalists. So maybe we'll see some of these guys wow. on TV one day. Wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. They could be sitting right here. You never, never know. know. <laughs> okay. Now, still to come, former Alabama safety Mark Barron believes he's ready to step in and help the NFL's Tampa Bay Buccaneers right now. Gary Harris will have the details on that next in Alabama's home team sports. And later on, Ronald McDonald is getting a new supersized hangout just in time for the Olympics. Hey. Just a rundown. Mic check, testing, testing, mic check, test, 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 one, two, three, testing, testing. WVUA is working on news stories for you tonight at 10. WVUA's John Huddleston joins us now with a preview. Hi, Philip, and coming up tonight on the News at 10, find out what type of jobs will be available when the new Walter Energy Mine opens in 2018, plus what parents and teachers want to see at new University Place Elementary School. For those stories and a whole lot more, join your home team tonight for WVUA News at 10. Now, the Tuscaloosa Chevrolet Sports Update with WVUA's Gary Harris. The nation's premier head coach and celebrity golf event was held today at Reynolds Plantation Resort on Lake Oconee outside Atlanta. The sixth annual Chick-fil-A Bowl Challenge Charity Golf Tournament took place. A 16-team field of NCAA head coaches and celebrity alumni competed in a two-man scramble format over 18 holes vying for a first-place prize of $125,000 in scholarship funds. All participating teams will receive a portion 
of the $520,000 total scholarship purse. Nick Saban played with former Crimson Tide All-American running back Johnny Musso. Hopefully by tonight at 10, we'll let you know how Coach and the Italian Stallion Musso did in today's event. And with that, we say good evening, everybody. Welcome in. Don't forget, Tider Insider TV on your way or on the way for you tonight at 6.30 right here on your home team station, WVUA. Now, the Southeastern Conference will look a lot different in men's basketball this coming season. New coaches are coming in at LSU, Mississippi State, and South Carolina. And two schools with strong men's programs, Missouri and Texas A&M, are joining the conference. Alabama head coach Anthony Grant, for one, is excited about what all the changes will mean for the SEC. Um, obviously, we've gone through some changes, some coaching changes at different different institutions over the league. We're adding a couple of new members to the league, so you know I'm excited about the direction that that uh, as a as a as a whole that the SEC is going. I think it's a good addition for us with Texas A&M and Missouri coming into the league. I think those two teams, from a basketball standpoint, uh, I think will will be great benefits to to our league. So I'm excited about that. And then obviously, uh, you know, when you anytime you add new coaches uh, to the league, uh, you know, there's a a level of uh, uncertainty, uh, I guess excitement in terms of styles of play and different things that come in. I certainly have great respect for the new coaches that will be in our league. To the NFL, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers used the seventh overall pick to take Alabama safety Mark Barron last Thursday night. The Bucs believe that Barron is NFL ready right now, and they've already penciled him in as a starter. Barron believes playing for Nick Saban in Alabama is the reason why. You know, coming from the program I come from, you know, that's kind of just the, the mindset we have. You know, we want to be the best at everything we do. So, you know, we just go out and work towards that. Every day we go out to practice, you know, we're working towards being the best at what we do. So I think I'm going to carry over with that mindset. You know, um, the way we did things back at Alabama, you know, it, I think that would make it an easy transition for me to come in and have a great impact early. So, you know, I think I'll be able to bring that mindset of winning and wanting to be the best. Well, you know, it's been a trying year for Tuscaloosa and West Alabama following the April 27, 2011 tornadoes. But University of Alabama athletic teams have helped the community in the healing process. And gymnastics coach Sarah Patterson believes that will continue this spring. I think that all these things that have happened this year, from the first football game in September to the football national championship, to our national championship. I'd love to see our golf teams win and certainly end the year in uh, Oklahoma City with the softball team winning a championship. I think all those things continue to lift our community and I'm, I'm just proud to be a small part of it. Kentucky basketball coach John Calipari and the national champion Wildcats will visit Pre President Barack Obama in the White House on Friday to celebrate the school's eighth national title. Cal Perry says the first thing the players said in the moments after beating Kansas 67-59 last month was where they headed to the White House. Cal Perry says he's excited as players will get a chance to meet President Obama. Of course, the Alabama football team just there a couple of weeks ago. The University of Alabama has announced that Charlie Katica has accepted the position of women's head wheelchair basketball coach next season. Katica, native of Washington State, served as an assistant coach and head strength and conditioning coach for the Crimson Tide women last season. He has over 20 years of experience in the sport of basketball and 10 years experience coaching basketball and strength and conditioning since graduating from Central Washington in 2002. Katika is completing his Ph.D. at Alabama this semester in exercise science. Head men's coach Miles Thompson and former women's head coach Brent Harden will serve as assistant coaches on Katika's staff next season. And again, don't forget Tider Insider TV coming up at 6.30. Rodney Orr will join me for the latest on the Crimson Tide, including the transfer of quarterback Phillip Sims. Until then, more news at 6 right after this. This has been the Tuscaloosa Chevrolet Sports Update on WVUA. Roll, Chevy, roll.
McDonald's is supersizing its latest location. The restaurant in London will be the world's largest Golden Arches and is being built specifically for the London Olympics and will only be open during this year's Summer Games. Now, the restaurant will be about half the length of a football field and will employ over 2,000 employees and will seat some 1,500 people. It's almost like there's uh, some stadiums that aren't that big. I know. <laughs> place is huge. 100 at a McDonald's. Could swallow yeah. up several local sized McDonald's restaurants. Oh, yeah. Super size. <laughs> it's big. big. Yes. Yeah. A nice sunset going on outside that we've been chatting about earlier. Yeah, you know, the sunset time getting later and later. Philip, we're talking now 733. How about that? A lot later this time of the year. The forecast, though, is going to stay hot. It's been hot over the past few days, feeling more like summer. Uh, mid to upper 80s are likely all the way through the weekend. Low 90s are possible Saturday, Sunday through Tuesday. Chance of rain is there Wednesday through Friday. Look for scattered activity each day. And believe it or not, it's not officially summer yet. Not yet. Still got a ways to go. That's going to do it for the news at 6. You can find us online anytime. Just go to WDUATV.com. Our next newscast is tonight at 10. But right now, keep it tuned right here. Tighter Insider is straight ahead. Have a good evening.